everybody, it's Karina with Karina Loves to Plan. Welcome back to my channel. I have another ink swatching video courtesy of Friends and the most recent Pelican Hub. So what I will be swatching, gosh, I've got like a little package here. There will be some inks that Corolla of from Corolla sent me and she also sent me this beautiful painting along with a quick note. So she sent me some inks. One of them leaked, but that's okay. And then a cute little pin. And then I also got some inks from Angela of Pens, Paper, Plans. I haven't even read the note yet and it's been with me for like over a week. And then I also have some inks from the most recent Pelican Hub. So there are people who brought ink samples that they were wanting to share with everyone else and I got to try them. Plus we'll get to swatch the ink of the year. So in order to do my swatching, the way that I've prepped is I have two jars of water here, one with hot or warm water and one with cold water. I've then got my River City Pen Co nib holder with my Kathamori brass dip pen or brass nib. And then I have a whole bunch of these pipettes, which I actually purchased off Amazon for like $10 and I got like a hundred of them. And then what I also have is my B6 Galen leather uh, notebook, which has 52 GSM Tamoy River paper. I also have these sheets of paper or where is it here? My ink and pen catalog, which I'm going to organize each ink by color family, as well as, oh my gosh, it's never ending, the uh, Rhodia paper here, which I also use for swatching. So this video I'm going to do as a voiceover. I'm going to switch it back and forth. Someday some ink swatching videos I'll do as voiceovers, some I will do as real time no sped up or anything today because there are so many inks to swatch i will be doing it as a voiceover so let's get started the first ink i have here is dominant industry mayfall and yes you are hearing that correctly i have another sample of dominant industry mayfall angela was so lovely to send me another sample because she knew how much i loved it now you'll see here that i'm only swatching this in my b6 galen leather notebook i don't need to make up another uh, little swatch on my Rhodia paper, but writing with, for one, this River City Penco nib holder and my Kakimori brass dip pen. It's just so lovely when swatching inks. It's one of my favorite pieces of equipment when swatching ink. And this ink just shades so beautifully. And what I love about it is it's this muted red orange without being too in your face. Love it. Next is Vinta Silab, which is Blaze. Silab? Oh, I really should look these up beforehand. This is Blaze, so I was expecting this to be a bright orange. Very deep, very... Well, mostly more, it's going more towards like the red orange, but a really, really nice color for fall. And I think this will definitely be one that I use for the next 30 inks, 30 days in November. But look at how bright that is. I didn't think I would like orange, and I don't have many oranges in my collection, but... I guess my preferences change as the seasons go, as the year goes. So, you know, with fall right now, all of the oranges are really appealing to me. And I don't have too many Vinta inks. So it was nice to try a whole bunch more. Again, I do apologize for my pronunciation. I am Filipino, but I, Tagalog is not my, my first language. So my pronunciation is going to be off. So this is Vinta Silab or Blaze so pretty and look at the way that it sheens this is once it's dried it sheens this beautiful gold color next is vinta bini bini which means pink rose this one is a typical pink that i really really love and you'll see it here when i swirl it around it reminds me of sailor shikiori yozakura gorgeous color and it actually shades really really nicely i'm excited to be able to use this because you guys know how much i love my dusty pinks this is just another one to add to the collection of the of all the dusty pinks that i have ever ever tried and it's nice to actually have an ink uh, brand that is filipino i mean troublemaker is also a filipino brand but it's so nice to actually try vinta and try a few of them so it's vinta bini bini which is pink rose and you can see that it actually in the writing sample, you can still see a lot of the color and a lot of the shading. So it's not, well, it's legible. It's not not legible, not illegible. 
what am I trying to say? But look at how pretty. Vinta Bini Bini. Next we have Vinta Peregrino or Pilgrim's Blue. Now, funny enough, growing up, blue was my favorite color, but it's not one that I reach for a lot when I am inking up my pens, but this blue is gorgeous. Really, really pretty and I'm not sure why I don't use more blue. Maybe it's because I used so much blue growing up in all of my pens that now I'm like, well, there's a plethora of all the different inks. I need to use every single other color except blue because I used it so much when I was in junior high, high school, and even university. So, but this one is really, really gorgeous. I like the shading of it. And actually even in, you know, a finer line, you can still see the color, like the really pretty blue in that. So I write with mostly fine and extra fine nibs, so it's really important to me that you can still see the color when you're writing with nibs that fine. And with this one, you certainly can. So this is Vinta Peregrino, which is Pilgrim's Blue, and you can see just how gorgeous that is. The next one is Andorillium. Oh my gosh, how do you pronounce this? Tolipe? Oh, please don't at me. <laughs> to light moth warm. I'm going to have to look that up. And it is brown. Yes, brown. Um, I am not one that reaches for brown as often as other people do. And I know how some people absolutely love the color brown because it's a neutral, it's calming. For me, I have a hard time differentiating between the different browns. This one has beautiful shading and it is a pretty color, but it's not one that I would normally reach for. And I mean, Andorillium is, I've only tried a couple of Andorillium brand inks, but this one seems to be not too wet because I've tried Gallinol Purple and that one was just so wet it bled through the Tomoe River paper. But this one actually seems to have a good flow, not too wet and actually shades really, really well on both the Tomoe River paper and the Rhodia paper. So this one is Andorillium. I don't know how to pronounce that. I'm so sorry. The next few inks here are ones that I got from the Pelican Hub. First being the Edelstein Rose Quartz. And why does that ink look green in the bottle, even though it is Rose Quartz? If anybody knows the answer to that, because I know this is actually a question that I've seen uh, in a comment, as well as I, I feel like I've seen this in maybe a couple of discords or on Reddit as well. But why does the ink look green? Is it the bottle that it's in that makes it look like it's green? I don't know. For anybody who would know the science behind that, please let me know. But I did try this ink during 30 inks, 30 days in my Pelican M605 black tortoise shell. And it was actually not an ink that I really enjoyed. It felt a bit dry, even in my Pelican. Um, and it felt almost too light to write with. So not one that I probably plan on keeping. I will probably give away a whole bunch of samples of this and then end up giving away the bottle eventually. But so happy to have been given the opportunity to try this. The next one was a sample given to me by the Pelican Hubmaster, actually, and it is Monteverde Rose Pink. Now, when I'm looking at it, I'm doing the voiceover and looking at the dried version of this versus the way it's going on um, right on the paper. And dried, it looks very similar to Rose Quartz, but the Monteverde Rose Pink has more of a purple tone to it. And you'll see, actually, once it's dried, there's a little bit more purple around the pooling of this. It's not a sheen, but it's almost like a, a chromo shader with a little bit of the purple pooling around the edges. Again, this was one that was given to me by the Hubmaster and he wanted to actually give me the whole bottle. And I said, no, I do not need another full bottle of ink. I am good with this one, with the sample. I'm happy to try it, but I, I don't know if I need to explore it further than what I have here, or maybe I'll try it for 30 inks, 30 days, we'll see but that is Monteverde Rose Pink, and look at how similar it looks to Rose Quartz, and even to my nib holder. But you can see the purple there already. The next one is one given to me by Cass, who I met at the Hub, and she had a gorgeous collection of, Pel of 
Leonardo's actually and Estes with a whole bunch of different nip grinds so it was fun to try all of those and she had a whole bunch of samples that she was giving away and this one is by Kaki Mori and it's Zabun Z-A-B-U-N Zabun Zab I do not know if I'm pronouncing that correctly I apologize please let me know how to pronounce that in the comments below and this is the first Kaki Mori ink that I've tried so this is actually quite a pigmented ink and this took a very long time to dry on both my Tomoe River paper as well as the Rhodia but I love the color it reminds me of I'm looking in my drawer now what ink is that one my ah my Laban Poseidon green it looks like that or it looks like the Narwhal Atlantic blue it's got that beautiful dark teal color very pretty then the next one is Ferris Wheel Press Green with Curiosity. And I, I love anything with Ferris Wheel Press that shimmers or sheens. And I thought, why not give this one a try? And I actually, have I seen this one before? I don't think I have. So I was very pleasantly surprised once this ink actually dried. But even the base color is really pretty. This is very gorgeous forest green. And I really love that. So green with curiosity. I actually love the names of these because they don't always give you an indication of what the ink is going to look like. But then if you actually purchase a Ferris wheel press bottle on the side, it will tell you exactly what it is, whether it's a shimmering ink or a shading ink or a sheeny ink and what color these are. And this one was definitely a surprise to me. It felt lovely to write with on my Kakimori brass dip pen, didn't feel dry at all. But I've noticed actually with most of the shimmer or sheen inks from Ferris Wheel Press, they're actually not too dry and they're these ones are actually quite uh, pigmented and lovely to write with so I'm excited. But I'm going to show you here shortly what this is going to look like once it is dried. It is positively gorgeous and so that's where it's what you can kind of see the sheen already but bam! look at that that red sheen with the blue shimmer stunning oh i love it the next one is ink institute seabold lily seabolds seabolds i hope i'm pronouncing that correctly and this is the last sample that i say purchased but um was gifted by cass and this one is actually a very very pretty orange it's very similar uh, in shade to dominant industry maple actually so i'm glad i have the two to compare and to to use because i think during the fall season i'll be very very happy to use these or even actually in summer they're not just fall colors they're very good in the summer as well and i don't own too many ink institute inks or haven't tried too many of them so it'll be interesting for me to actually put this in a pen and see how this flows out of a pen and if Ink Institute is something that or is a brand that I would like to use more of in the future. So this one shades really, really beautifully, but again, does feel very similar to Dominant Industry Maple. It's a bit lighter and a bit more orange than that, if I can say that, but still a very beautiful ink. Look at that shading. Gorgeous. And then I have these four inks and a lovely pin from Corolla. So I'm going to first do Colorverse Golden Gate Bridge. And this was the San Francisco Pen Show uh, ink. And I did not get a bottle of this for myself just because I knew that I was very limited on uh, carry-on liquids. And Pam gave me a ton of ink, so I was okay with not taking this one home. And Corolla was so kind to send me a sample of this. And I have heard different uh, opinions on Golden Gate Bridge. Like, for example, Amanda B and Maria Rousseau are both like, they, they don't feel this properly reflects what Golden Gate Bridge actually looks like. I've only ever seen it once in my life and that's when it was covered in fog. So I'm not the best person to say if this color matches or not, but it is a very pretty color. Again, it reminds me a little bit of Mommy G because it's got like that pink, but also red undertone. And then I'm gonna show you quickly once it's dried, how it actually has developed a really, I don't wanna say, well, it's like a brown goldish sheen. So that's when it's wet. And now you're gonna see it when it is dry and you can see the sheen as it pools. It's just gorgeous. Maybe one I'll use for even Christmas, who knows? Next is Pannonia and Amarillo 
uh, Rosa Mexicano. And I made a mistake at first and started writing Andorillium. And I apologize, but I did fix it at the end. So these inks were um, a collaboration between Pannonia and Amarillo. And this Rosa Mexicano is just stunning. I really like it. It's a beautiful, bright, bright pink. And then it dries with a really nice kind of goldish brown shimmer. And um, Corolla actually helped to design a sticker that goes with this whole set when you purchase them. And I'm so lucky that she gave me the, well, one of the originals of the uh, design, which I have put into my ink journal here. But this is a very pretty ink. My first trying a Pannonia ink, and I'm really excited to be able to use these. So this one is Pannonia Amarillo Rosa Mexicano, and I know I labeled these all incorrectly. I will fix it, I promise, before the end of the video. It does get fixed. Um, but again, a very pretty, pretty magenta-y pink. And you'll see here in the dried, all of that sheen. Really, really beautiful. Just look at that. The next one in this collection is the Pannonia Amarillo Azul Frida. And this is a really pretty blue. And I, like I said earlier, I really need to use blues more, but this one leans a little bit more to the purple, kind of like that blurple. And it reminds me a little bit of Ajisai, the Pilot of Roshizuku Ajisai, because this blue leans more towards the, the blurple shading and the blurple color. And this one shades really, really nicely and so far flows really well on my Kakimori Brass Dip Pen. And actually, even in the writing sample in the finer line that I'm gonna draw shortly, you can still see the color. There's always the risk when you are writing with a fine or an extra fine nib that you're not gonna see much of the color or the shading. But this one actually isn't too, too bad at all. You can see there in the, in the extra fine line that it is actually not too bad. And then even in the Rhodia, the Rhodia paper, it is also drying very, very nicely and that shading shows off beautifully. So the Pannonia Amarillo Azul Frida. Oh my gosh, I really hope I'm saying all these correctly. Azul Frida. And again, really, really beautiful color. Great part of this collection. And then lastly, Pannonia Amarillo, Amarillo Antiguo. And I'm normally a little hesitant to try any yellows because you never know if they're gonna be legible or not. This one is fantastic and I'm excited to use this. And I mean, I like yellows when they're legible and actually when I was writing with it, sometimes the hard part is being able to see the ink while you're writing with it. And this one you can actually see quite clearly while you're writing with it. So I'm very happy with this one. And this one will be so fun to paint with as well. And Corolla had already painted me the beautiful bouquet. And I'm so happy that she also gave me the samples of these because I am excited to paint with these as well. Corolla is actually one of my inspirations for painting with fountain pen ink. She does these beautiful abstract florals and you should definitely go give her a follow. So yeah, you can see there that, I mean, it, it does go down nicely and I think it's very legible for yellow and there's not too many that I can say that about. So this is Pannonia Amarillo, Amarillo Antiguo. So there are all the inks swatched and I'm looking at this and I feel like Vinta Bini Bini Pink Rose looks very similar to Ferris Wheel Press Spadina Rose, which is, I also wanna show it here at 30 inks, 30 days. Very similar to Ferris Wheel Press Spadina Rose, but also looks like Birmingham Penco Milkweed, which is, gosh, you're gonna see me flip through here. And I promise I will do a flip through of this whole book once the year is done. That's not milky. <laughs> Uh, milkweed is there. Oh no, that's more purple and this is more pink. Okay, but I really like that color. That color is pretty and uh, I love the dominant industry maple. Always love that. But look at how similar actually it, it looks to Ink Institute Seabolt's Lily. There's some here that are very, very similar surprisingly. Like these two, 
Pelican, Pelican Edelstein and Monteverde Rose Pink look very, very similar when you write with them. This one is a little bit more cooler toned pink and this one is a little warmer. And then we have Andorillium Tulip Moth Warm, which is another brown, brown. Uh, <laughs> I really like Peregrino Pilgrim's Blue. I really like that blue. It kind of reminds me of Australis Hydra by Robert Oster, which is here, except this one has the red sheen and this one doesn't. And then let's see, I really like Kakamori uh, Zaboon, Zaboon. It's still wet actually. And then look at the sheen and the shimmer on Ferris Will Press Green with Curiosity. That is awesome. I absolutely love that. And then Colorverse Golden Gate Bridge. It's kind of like a pinky red. Almost reminds me of Pilot Roshizuku Momiji. And then the three Amarillo inks are gorgeous. And I'm definitely planning on putting this in this journal here to commemorate Corolla's wonderful, wonderful painting. I really like that yellow and it seems very, very visible as well. Oh, and this one reminds me a little bit of Pilot Roshizuku, either Amaiiro or Asagao. Which one is the more purpley one? And I'm flipping through to the beginning. Yeah, or Ajisai. That's uh, this Ajisai. Yeah, that's Azul Frida and Ajisai. Yeah, that's the one. It looks exactly like that. Oh, beautiful. So, hope you guys enjoyed this ink swatching video. I did actually enjoy having a show on in the background while I'm doing my ink swatching. And, you know, doing the voiceover is also a really great way to, to look at the inks as well. If you guys have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. And don't forget to like and subscribe uh, to this video as well and to my channel. I really appreciate each and every one of you. Thank you guys so much for watching and have yourselves a great day.